Now we have a mass m that slides down this hill and then, then it gets on this plank. The surface of the plank is rough, so the mass will come to a rest after some time with respect to plank. And when that happens, we need to find what is the total work done by the friction force in this whole process. And then second part, can it be stated that the result obtained does not depend on the choice of reference frame? So first, let's find the work performed by the frictional forces. Now, if we consider this mass M and the plank as a system, then the frictional force is an internal force for the system. So we can conserve momentum for the combined M and capital M. So that's what we'll do. So let's read also. Friction is an internal force. So conserving momentum in X direction for disc plank system. So initial momentum is M into root 2 GH. So when it comes down to a height H, its velocity will be root 2 GH in X direction. So M into root 2 GH initial momentum is equal to final momentum M plus M into VF. So from here we get the final velocity of the system to be this much. Now we need to find the work done by frictional forces. So we'll do energy conservation. So work done by gravity plus work done by frictional force is equal to change in kinetic energy. So MGH plus work done by friction, which we need to find is equal to final kinetic energy. And final, final kinetic energy is of course half total mass into VF square. So we'll just put this value and square it and resolving, we get the work done by the friction to be minus mgh into m by m plus m. And as expected, it's negative. Even though you can imagine that work done on the plank by the friction is positive. Because the plank is moving forward because of the sliding friction. But work done on the disc due to friction is negative. Because the disc is moving forward while the friction is acting on the disc backwards. So all that while it's sliding. Anyway, for next part, can it be stated that result obtained does not depend on the choice of reference frame. So let's say that the system starts moving together when the ball, the disc is at a distance L1. So the disc has moved a distance L1 and the plank has moved a distance L2. So at this moment, the let's say the, the both the disc and the plank starts moving with the same velocity Vf, which is same as this. So total work done by friction, let's write in terms of L1 and L2 also, instead of just calculating its magnitude. So work done by the friction on the ball is negative as discussed and its value is the friction and multiplied by the distance traveled so that will be minus f into l1 because displacement of the of the ball and the frictional force are in opposite directions so that is the work done by the friction on the ball and work done by friction on the plank is f into l2 this much. So this we can write as minus F into L1 minus L2. And L1 minus L2 is the distance between the initial point of the plank and the finally wherever the ball stopped. So that is S. So the work done by friction is minus F into S. And you can now imagine that in any reference frame, the distance between the ball and the initial point of the plank is going to be same is going to be s so the answer of this part is yes the result obtained the total work done by the friction is independent of reference frames now here he has not asked but you can imagine now that if he had given the value of the friction coefficient here so you could find the distance this relative distance the ball has traveled so finding the frictional work done by the friction from here and dividing it by 
the sliding friction that is k into small m into g you could have found s or he could have given s and you would be probably supposed to find the friction coefficient so in many ways such problems can be framed but all in all this is a good problem